Welcome back, people. Um, in the last video, I finished up reassembling the carburetor, and it was getting ridiculously long. I think the final video ended up at like, I don't know, it was uh, like 52 minutes or something ridiculous. So, if any of you made it through that and are still here, um, see you in heaven, because you're a saint. Um, so, this last video, as promised at the end of the other one, um, is going to cover basically all the final adjustments um, per the Mercruise or manual, service manual. Um, I covered some of it in the assembly video because it's, I mean, it's kind of critical that you set it as you're putting things together, like the, the float height and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm just going to go through anything that wasn't covered in terms of initial adjustments and I'll recap. Um, the values and stuff like that that may have been covered in the last one just so it's all kind of together in this one video um, so that being said grab some lubrication and uh, here we go Ooh, sorry about that I just forget to turn my air conditioner off the HVAC units were right next to me. Okay. So, the setup procedure I'm going to do here is for my 5.7 liter specifically, but all these values are, um, I, I believe, the same for all the Mercarbs. Um, but you just, you'll want to verify for yours if it's on like a 3 liter or something like that. But the manual I have covers the specific year range in a 5 liter and a 5.7 and all the values are basically the same in terms of uh, setup procedures. So again, just double check. I can't verify that yours is the same, but um, anyway. So let's just recap things that we've already done. So when we were assembling, um, we already set the float and we set the float level to 9 16 of an inch and the float drop to 1 and 3 30 seconds. Um, and again, remember that's from the gasket, not without the gasket. Which is pretty easy to remember because you kind of have to install the gasket in order to put the float assembly on. So, anyway. Um, the next thing that I want to cover is the idle, or the, uh, yeah, the idle mixture screw, which is down here. We already installed this um, in the last video. I'll just mention it again. So you basically, what you want to do when you put in the new one is I, I tightened it by hand. Now if your threads are corroded, it might be hard to turn in. So you can use a screwdriver, but um, you want to turn it all the way in until it seats, but don't, don't go crazy on it because you can damage the seat. <clears throat> and then what you want to do is back it out one and a quarter turns. Now that's the the recommended setting from the manual but that's something that you're going to want to tune on the boat and I believe the correct procedure is actually to tune that with it in the water at operating temperature um, and I believe it's even in gear um, next thing is the <clears throat> the pump rod so over here on the linkage this is the pump rod now I believe on the older the older model Mercarbs there was only one hole in the arm that goes to the accelerator pump and to adjust um, whether it was more rich or more lean you actually had to adjust the rod you had to make um, bends in it to change the length effectively um, but on my particular model <clears throat> they actually have three different holes so what that allows you to do is change whether or not you get more or less fuel and the recommended setting is what would make sense is the middle hole. So that's where I put it. Um, what I'm going to do is once this is on the boat, I will kind of get everything up to temperature and running and everything. And I will essentially just pump, pump the throttle open and closed and listen to see if it stutters or anything like that. Um, or if I get any kind of black smoke, which would indicate that it's running rich, um, under, under acceleration. So, um, in that in that situation then I would go back and maybe look at changing the adjustment on the pump rod but per the manual <clears throat> start with it in the middle hole um, let's see what else the choke setting on the electric choke model 
um, which is what this is, you are supposed to set it. So this is, I don't know if you can see this, but this is your middle index mark. You have one on each side. Actually, it might be three. It's hard to tell with the paint. Actually, it looks like there's two to the left and three to the right. But anyway, um, the initial setting is two index marks clockwise of the middle. So that would actually be a more lean setting than the middle. So if you find that it's um, too lean while it's warming up, um, you may need to adjust this clockwise. And what you do is you loosen these three screws as they are now, and you make this adjustment here. So you can see I'm spinning it left and right. So I'm going to set that back to the recommended adjustment and then tighten down these screws. Okay, um, what else? Okay, the choke unloader. And what that is, <clears throat> is when you open the throttle and all the way, um, you can see how the throttle plate there kicks open. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing here. So if you rotate the throttle all the way open, what's going on here is this little arm underneath here hits the fast idle cam and pulls down on the front side of it. You can see that reaction there is actually pulling down on this choke rod. So what that does is when the throttle's fully open, it actually opens the choke slightly. Because if you think about it, if you're creating that much vacuum in the motor, it's going to stall out unless you can let some air in. So with the choke fully sealed off like that, the engine would just die. So basically that, that allows in some amount of air. So the spec for that is 564 of an inch. <clears throat> and I know most of you are saying, how the heck am I supposed to measure that? And for those of you that have a drill index, um, this is the best way that I know of, is take a 564 drill bit. Um, other than that, you could try and do it with, um, <clears throat> and this isn't, isn't even in 64s, but this, uh, this rule that comes with the carb rebuild kit, um, you could make an attempt to get that close, but really the best way to do it is with a, the correct size dowel pin or drill bit. So what you want to do is rotate the throttle fully open. I'm trying to do this one-handed. And once that's open the whole way, I'll take this drill bit. And you hear how that's rubbing. So what that tells me is it's fitting, but it is touching the sides. Now, just to verify, go up one size and drill bit 64th bigger so that can open be the spring loaded but it won't go in otherwise and then I will also go down a drill bit size to a 16th and you can see that's got plenty of slop so 564th seems to be dead on now this is the part that I hate about most videos like this, where they say, hey look, it's 564th, it's perfect. Um, but for most people, what if I have to change that? So in order to change that, <clears throat> I'm not going to do it because I don't need to, but I don't have pliers out. You would take pliers, and so as you can see, again, this is coming up and it hits this fast idle cam here. So what you would do is if <clears throat> it was opening too far, you would bend this tab down so it engages later and if it was not opening enough you would bend this tab up so it engages earlier so pretty straightforward okay so now that that is done <clears throat> um, let's go over a couple other odds and ends here so if you weren't replacing the float um, one thing you would want to do is actually check your old float which I this is the old one here so I mean they're hollow so in theory if they were absorbing fuel you could shake them and hear it but also the plastic itself could have ethanol or water or fuel absorbed into it um, at least a small amount so what you would want to do is actually weigh the float if you have like a small kitchen scale or something like that that would read in grams um, the factory weight for this float is supposed to be nine grams max so as long as it's under that, you're okay to reuse it. If it's over, you're going to want to replace it. You also want to inspect it for holes and things like that. 
Okay, so the last thing we need to do is adjust the idle speed screw and I'll show you how to also fine tune the idle mixture screw. Um, so what we wanna do as a preliminary setting is we wanna open the choke fully because that'll rotate the fast idle cam down. Um, and then you turn the idle speed screw in. You can see that until it just starts to touch the cam. And then what we wanna do is go two full turns. That's good there. So it's just touching. That's half, one, one and a half, two. Okay. So now that is adjusted preliminarily again. Um, so now the, the key point here for this next part is this is going to be done on the boat. So once this is in the water, you are gonna to wanna to start the motor, get it up to operating temperature um, until the choke is fully open. And then, um, okay, so the idle mixture screw. So this is what we're gonna to do to kind of get this fine tuned in. Um, so we're gonna to wanna to adjust this in the water in forward gear in the idle position though. You wanna rev it up to the throttle plate being open. You just want it just clicked over into forward gear at idle. Now what we're gonna do is once we're in that condition, we're gonna tune this idle speed screw until it's idling around 600 RPMs. And ideally you're gonna to wanna to use a shop tachometer for this just because boat tachometers are notoriously inaccurate, especially at low RPM. Um, so if you have a shop tach, use it here. Um, so once the engine's idling at 600 RPMs, then what you're going to do, this is gonna be hard to get to on the boat, but it's a good place for a flexible screwdriver. Um, the idle mixture screw down here. So if you remember, we initially set that to one and a quarter turns out. But what you wanna do is with the boat running, again, I'm gonna reiterate this a thousand times, in forward gear at idle, in the water, um, what you wanna do is take your screwdriver and turn the idle mixture screw clockwise inward um, and turn it very slowly until you notice the engine speed starts to drop. So what's gonna happen is you're slowly leaning out the idle mixture <coughs> at idle. Um, so once you notice it start to drop, then what you're gonna wanna do is turn it back the other way counterclockwise and you wanna count the rotations as you're backing out. Um, and as you go out, it'll start to, you'll notice it'll probably start to idle up and then at some point it's gonna start to bog down and kinda idle lower again and that's because it's running too rich. So what you're basically trying to do is once you notice that when you're coming out and you're counting the turns, you're gonna say it was six full turns until you started to notice it bogged down again. So what you wanna do is in most cases you're gonna wanna split that difference so then you'd screw it back in three turns so that would get you right between the two in terms of um, ideal mixture at idle. Um, sometimes it may be slightly varied from that. Um, and some people also like to use a vacuum gauge for this procedure because your max vacuum would also indicate kind of your most ideal mixture at idle. But this will work. I, vacuum gauge is probably more ideal, but this is per the Merck manual, so it's that's what I'd recommend. Um, so once you get that set somewhere in between those two extremes, that'll be your setting. And then what you're going to want to do is come back and then readjust your idle screw now that your mixture's set correctly to where you're idling between 650 and 700 RPMs in forward gear in the water at idle. Okay, so that pretty much covers all the, um, the specs for the assembly process. Um, so we got this thing back together, painted all the gaskets, new components installed, all the settings are verified. So this thing is basically ready to go back on. I'm pretty excited to see how smooth it runs, hopefully, knock on wood. Um, one other thing I didn't cover is, obviously we may need to tweak the choke setting. Um, if it seems to be idling, too lean or too rich or has a hard time starting we may want to make some adjustments to this but I can't tell you what that's going to be 
all I can tell you is counterclockwise counterclockwise is more rich clockwise is more lean so you're just gonna have to play within those those ranges um, until you get your best kind of starting conditions and uh, cold cold running conditions okay so that should conclude it for the uh, Mercarb rebuild series I know they were long sorry I just tried to go into much detail as I could I don't want to leave any steps out um, so with that done I'm going to find the correct gasket to mount this thing to the motor and hold it up and we should uh, hopefully get this thing in the boat soon mounts are done um, just need to drill the holes for the lags glass the holes redrill them and uh, get this motor in thanks for watching guys see ya